Good afternoon and welcome to the Demolition Daily live stream. Um, I think this is day 13, so it could be unlucky for some. Uh, thanks for joining us as always. Um, before we get into the nitty gritty of today's show, I just wanted to remind you very quickly that tomorrow at 7pm UK time, we're going to be hosting our first and <laughs> quite possibly our last Demolition Social Club get together. Um, we've got a, a little banner to go with that. Uh, there you go. Uh, yeah, so the Demolition Social Club is basically an online get-together using the Zoom software that everybody seems to be using for online meetings. Um, if you sp fancy spending half an hour or so in the company of some like-minded demolition men and women from the comfort of your own home, and, and just hop on over to demolitionnews.com. You'll find links on um, how to join, uh, where to take part. It's very, very straightforward. It's just a, literally a case of pressing a button. Uh, all of those details are on demolitionnews.com. It's the lead story, um, so you should be it should be nice and easy to find it. Now, uh, we've already had a, a handful of people who have signed up uh, to say they're going to be taking part, but we have got plenty of room for more. Um, so if you fancy a bit of online banter, or if you'd just like to sit on the sidelines and watch it all unfurl, or possibly unravel, uh, we'd love to see you there. Now, I'm watching the screen very closely because um, we are planning to have a guest uh, dropping into our <clears throat> into our green room at any moment now, um, fingers crossed, or technology allowing. But the, basically, just to start the ball rolling, the, the main reason for starting the Demolition Social Club is quite simply there's a lot of uh, demolition men and women that are currently not at work one way or another due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Just how many workers, companies, and sites that includes? Frankly, it's almost impossible to to tell. It's it's an absolute mystery. Now, the National Federation of Demolition Contractors has tried to get a handle on on the number by polling its members. So far, less than thirty percent have actually responded, and of those, around half have closed sites. But that I've done the, the math very quickly in my head. That's only about thirty companies. Um, when there are around 600, give or take, 600 demolition firms in the UK. So 5% of the entire industry is hardly representative. So it's it's quite hard to know just how many people are, are away from work at the moment in, in the UK demolition industry. One of the reasons I wanted to, to look at this um, is because, as I say, we're, we're three weeks in now, we're into our third week, um, and the messages that we are getting from the powers that be across various industries across various nations are very 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 hard to uh, nail down um we've got um just to give you an example overnight we uh, let me start that again you know, yesterday we received um, a notification that one of the u.s states has declared that it's impossible for any contractor or project owner to monitor the protection of each worker to the fullest under the current condi conditions and they were recommending a closure of all sites then overnight, we received news that the devolved Scottish government has taken a similar course of action. They've ordered the closure of all sites that don't appear on an approved list of essential contracts. At the same time, the health and safety executive here in in, in England um, has has actually. I, I'm sorry, I've just had a notification coming up. My apologies for being distracted. Um, the, the health and safety executive said they have the power to close sites if it, if we if they're found to be con contravening the guidance from Public Health England. Yeah, with all of that evidence in, in that direction, we've had news today that uh, major contractor Mace has today stated that it's reopening some some of its sites following a, a week-long suspension. Quite what th they're basing that, that on, I'm not entirely sure. Um, and then just this morning, uh, over on LinkedIn, I'm not going to name names because, um, well, it's not, it's not my place to do so um, but we've heard that a demolition contractor has been hit with a fifteen thousand pound fine by a major contractor uh, and a, a proper household name contractor as well for refusing to work on a site um, that the demolition company deemed impossible to manage in accordance with covid19 rules now the, the plan was to have uh, dave smith of um, the shut the sites uh, or stop the sites um campaign on um but i've just seen up in the um yeah up in the notifications unfortunately it looks like he's having trouble joining us so i'm going to carry on and hope that he, he does manage to um one of the things that 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 strikes me about this is the fact that we, we have this differential at the moment between um england 
and Scotland. Now, I know we've, we have devolved go government and everything else, but, you know, we, we, we live in much the same climate. We live in much the same set of rules and everything else. And yet Scotland has taken a, a, a bold and I think very brave decision to say, unless your contract appears on this specific list, you need to stop. And yet here in England, we, we don't have that same guidance or, you know, we, we don't have that input at all. And it, it does beg the question, why? It, it, is there something about the Scottish diet, you know, haggis and, and deep fried Mars bars that makes them doubly susceptible to um, COVID-19? My guess is that's probably not the case. Um, so I, I, I'm not entirely sure quite where the, the, this differential is, is coming from as well. I, I can see that Dave is still trying to get on board, so I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. But one of the points that he makes in his blog, um, which I will link to in our show notes, um, is he suggests that this is down, you know, he mentions the word greed, which, yeah, I'll, I'll leave him to explain that if we can get him on. But he's also talking about the lobbying power of, of large contractors. I do think there's a degree of that. Um, and I, I'm hoping that that, that, that is you know proven to be the case because if anything comes any good can come out of this i'm hoping that it will be a some some kind of refactoring of, and um, recalibrating of the way that the uk demolition industry works and, and how it's it's perceived by main contractors tier one contractors and that kind of thing um one of the things that, that I wanted to ask Dave about, and I'm, you can tell I'm, I'm fudging now because I can I know he's working away at the background on, on, on getting this uh, resolved, is he reposted on his blog, and again, I, I will uh, link to that, the fact that there are English companies, no great surprise, there's English companies working north of the border up in Scotland, um, and they are effectively using some sort of legal loophole that says, well, we're an English company, so we're, you know we're not bound by um, the, the rules of, of the devolved Scottish government to carry on working. I, I, it just it, it beggars belief, you know. I, I've I've had a lot of conversations, particularly over the last couple of days. I've spoken to a couple of um, demolition companies, in, including two that I probably respect at least as highly, if not slightly more highly than than just about any others in the country. And both of those are at work. Um, both of them had a, a bit of a period of, of consideration and, you know, they've looked at it long and hard. I know one has has put in place um, some additional training on social distancing and that kind of thing. And another is, is, you know, being very selective about what sites it progresses with. It's closed some and that, that it, can't, it can't manage its way around. Um, and it's kept others open as well. One of the things that, that strikes me about that is the fact that you know they they've clearly given this a lot of consideration. They've they've looked at it very very closely. Um, they've done the maths and where they where appropriate they have kept the site open. Well, one of the, the the things that came out of it from one company was the fact that they've spent years trying to teach their um, staff to share transport wherever possible, obviously to reduce carbon emissions and to reduce fuel costs and that kind of thing. And they're, they're now having to to wash away all of that training to say travel together uh, travel separately rather um to to minimize the risk of exposure you know to keep the social distancing and that kind of thing but at least they have proved you know they've they've done the maths they've gone away they've given it a lot of thought they've put in in place management structures and controls that allow them presumably to comply with the uh the word from uh, the public health england and they are doing so in the right way um what strikes me as as bizarre though is the fact that there are those that don't seem to have done that you know there there are quite there's there's plenty out there that have just soldiered on um and you know almost to the point well you know i'll keep working until somebody tells me not to and i think that that kind of throws the whole argument back to um, I was going to say the British government. It's clearly not the Scottish government because they are doing things in in their own way. But it certainly throws back things back onto the government because from the very beginning, it's been a very very woolly set of guidance. You know, every day up until recently, you know, we've we've had Boris Johnson or Michael Gove or Dominic Raab or one of the other government representatives standing at a lectern that clearly says, um, save lives, stay at home, save the NHS. 
all, all absolutely fine. And yet the, the guidance that's coming out of um, Westminster as far as the construction industry is concerned is just crack on regardless until we until we tell you to do otherwise. And one of the things that strikes me with this, as I say, I mean, my, my personal belief is if if you look at it long and hard enough, I, I do think there's an awful lot of sites out there that are currently open that should be closed. That's my personal feeling, not an expert opinion. I, I haven't analysed each and every demolition site in the UK, so I'm, I'm there to be shot down. But I think where where all of this comes from is I think the government were very woolly to begin with. You know, they, they didn't give clear guidance. I don't think the health and safety executive have covered themselves in any glory by giving any guidance, although they've now said that sites found to be um, contravening the, the advice of Public Health England can be um, served with a prohibition notice, which, you know, again, is quite late. And even the Scottish government, who, as I say, you know, my, my, my hack goes off to them. Even that, you know, we, as I say, we're three weeks in, and that that notification only came out last night. So, you know, they've had a good two weeks in which, you know, hundreds and thousands of demolition men and construction men and women will have been tried and tried and uh, uh, going to work day in, day out, and just couldn't get to get, uh, <clears throat> you know, just had to make it up as they were going along effectively. Thankfully, we're, we're at the point where uh, I think we're beyond that. Now, I've just had a, a message come in. Sorry, I was a bit distracted again. It doesn't look like Dave's going to be able to join us. I think he's been defeated by technology. Um, but all of those, all of those views are are valid. Um, we, we have a situation in the UK where we we have obviously we have the government, we have the health and safety executive. Um, you know, there are lots and lots of trade bodies sat below that. You know, Build UK and Construction Industry Council, and you know more other trade bodies than you can possibly imagine and yet they i've not seen any definitive guidance on what you should and shouldn't do <clears throat> and that i realize that you know all demolition companies and construction companies for that matter need to take uh, personal responsibility and they need to look at this in their own way and that kind of thing but i think where where i have an issue is the fact that we, we work in an industry that thrives and survives on rules. You know, you are told you must wear a hard hat. The industry wears a hard hat. You must wear high vis. The industry wears high vis. You must do this kind of training. You must have this kind of card. You must wear this kind of boots. We all do that. And yet when it's come to this, you know, which is, I mentioned at the very, very beginning of, of doing these daily live streams, the fact that the UK construction and demolition industry combined last year killed 40 people. This, this COVID crisis, it will kill thousands, quite possibly tens of thousands. This is an industry that employs more than a million people, if you, if you include demolition and construction. And yet we are exposing them to, as far as I can see, an enormous risk, a huge risk. I'm, you know, I, I, as I've mentioned this before as well, I, I, I'm on and off demolition and construction sites fairly regularly. I can't remember one where it would have been even remotely practicable to be two metres apart at all times. Yeah, if you're a, an excavator operator and you arrive on your own and you get in the cab and you leave on your own and you eat your lunch in the cab, yeah, I can, I can understand that. Uh, one of the companies I, I was speaking to are doing some work um, in a quarry, basically. You know, they are miles from anywhere, and uh, I've just got some good news. Dave Smith has just popped up into our – and he's waving at me, so that's good news. I can stop fudging in a minute. Um, so yeah, I, I tell you what, let me stop talking because I, I do have some questions for Dave, and um, I'm hoping that he'll be able to hear me. Um, just before I, I introduce him, uh, his Twitter bio describes him as a blacklisted construction union activist and an author, which puts him at least one ahead of me. Uh, on his blog, uh, and I, as I say, I'll link to that, uh, he has called for all non-essential sites to be closed, which is what I've been talking about, and for all workers to be paid in line with uh, pay-as-you-earn um, guidelines. So, Dave, hopefully you can hear me. Hello. Hello. Sorry, okay. I uh, can you hear me? I hear you loud and clear, Dave. Um, I, I, I've been fudging until you arrived, so I'm going to crack straight on. Um, yeah. We are now three weeks into the COVID-19 lockdown, and yet the messages coming from on high still seem as confused as ever. Uh, now, on your blog, you refer to greedy bosses and the point to the power of the lobbying power of, of large contractors. Is that what we're looking at here? I, I think if if they were actually talking about, uh, um, I've been on so many sides where they talk about 
safety is our number one priority. Well, you know, anyone who's watched the news over the last few nights and seen what's happening in those intensive care units, make it's but absolutely obvious that all of the medics in there are wearing head to toe, uh, you know, uh, PPE that completely covers them off from anyone else. The same news channels are telling you that um, anyone can catch this. Uh, you don't have to, you know, even the people without symptoms can still transmit it to other people, uh, which is why they're asking people to stay at home if they can. And, make, you know, police can come out and arrest anyone if there's more than three of you in a group together. Um, and yet construction sites that are building luxury flats or building hotels or, you know, even a power station ain't going to be open for another 10 years are being asked to go to work. This is just, it's got nothing to do with health and safety. It's got everything to do with penalty clauses. The big firms don't want to pay the penalty clauses. Uh, and major contractors just want the, the production to continue. If it was to do with health and safety, they'd shut the job. If it's to do with money, the job's staying open. That's that's the beginning and the end of it. And it's uh, most construction workers, um, although there is a, you know, we've been exposed to, to dust and gases and chemicals over the years that we've worked in the game, uh, you know, are probably fit enough that we personally, that the majority of us uh, are unlikely to, to die. But you bring it back to your family. You bring it back to your auntie. You bring it back to your, your mother, your grandparents, your sick kid with asthma. You know, that's that's the thing. Uh, and, until, uh, and, and until the government actually says shut the sides and actually pay everyone so that they're earning some money, uh, then, then I think it's just going to carry on, and we're going to do it. Our, our family people will do it, and the people who are doing this uh, are the people at the top of the industry who are forcing people to come to work. Sorry for blabbering on too much, but I'm no, angry that you are. No, absolutely. No, I, I mean, I, I, I was, I was mentioning while you were trying to do, defeat technology single-handedly in the background there, the fact that, that Scotland or the, the devolved Scottish government have, have now come out and said, you know, here's a list of essential sites. These need to remain open for one reason or another. And I know one of those in, includes a hospital, so fully understand that. Yeah. And yet we, we don't have that same ruling here in, in England, if, if anything – each day goes by, you know, it seems like the the rules have changed slightly, but we still carry on going to work. Well, they've just announced on the, uh, I saw the BBC News uh, feed before I before I finally got on, not here, sorry. Uh, and 850 people have died today. And the BBC is saying that they're only the people who've died in hospitals. So there'll be countless more people who've died out in care homes or in their own home uh, that, are, that aren't being counted in the, in the official figures. Um, and you're absolutely right. Look, if someone's building a Nightingale hospital or if someone is doing essential maintenance work to keep the electrics running or the water running or, you know, or even broadband running, uh, you know, as, as an essential service, then it's perfectly understandable that people should be, uh, you know, at work. And if they have to work, they have to have the proper PPE. You know, that, that, that's the other laughable thing about this, uh, you know, with all the big building companies. You, you fight like bloody hell, get a pair of gloves. You know, uh, you know, a pair of gloves are completely rotten, falling apart. You try and get a pair, you can't get them for love and the money. And suddenly now, every building site is supposed to be spotlessly clean. All the toilets that are not normally like rancid are all now meant to be immaculate. There's hand sanitizer everywhere. Everyone's got enough PPE. Well, where did it all come from? You know, because, you know, there might be one or two prestige sites where they're pushing the boat out on this kind of stuff. But for every prestige site, we've all worked on jobs that are just rotten and welfare facilities are horrible. Um, uh, and and well, so I keep saying this, we're going to be bringing it back to our kids, we're going to be bringing it back to your grandparents. Uh, and that's what I want to stop happening. Yeah. One of the things that I, I, I take on board everything you said there, and one of the things I, I struggle to get my head around is when you look at the nature of the way that a construction or a demolition work uh, site works, you know, there is a constant sharing of equipment and, you know, you're passing stuff backwards and forwards and you're climbing up and down the same ladders, the same scaffolding. You know, you're quite possibly traveling in the same vehicles. You're getting in and out the same diggers and that kind of thing. You know, I, I don't know how you're supposed to isolate that. I really don't. I think literally every, virtually every male member of my family um, you know, my cousins, my uncles, my aunties, you know, not my aunties, <laughs> 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 you know, they're, they're, they're bricklayers, they're plumbers, they're electricians, you know, they're ready mix concrete drivers, you know, we all work in the building game. Uh, and no one thinks that you can have two metres 
uh, social distancing. It's just completely bonkers. The only people who think that are politicians who've never worked on a building, so they've never stepped foot on a building, so this is for a photo opportunity, or some of some of the big, you know, you know. As I say, I, I, I don't blame the workers when they see photographs in the newspapers and saying, "Oh, look, all these workers all working on a building, so and they're close together." How are you meant to do it without being close together? You know, I had plumbers talking to me. They said, am I, gonna, am I meant to carry a bath up to the second floor to fit it in a set of luxury flats? Literally, I'm, what am I going to do that on my own? You know, it's a, you know, when people are laying curbs, you know, it takes two men to lay a curb. One of them's over red. Literally, when you bend down, your eye to virtually touch each other. You know, how are you going to keep two metres of social distance? It's complete and utter nonsense. We all know it. Everyone in the building game knows it. And even none of my... None of my family members want to carry on working. What they are worried about is not being paid and not being able to pay the bills. I completely get that. You know, that's totally understandable. But that's a completely separate issue about do they want to carry I mean, look, I think the vast majority of building workers are decent, hardworking, honest people who want to look after, you know, look after their, their kids and their families' health and safety. But... Uh, you know, you'll always get the occasional idiot or, you know, will eat asbestos if the governor gave him an extra fiver. Um, but, uh, but you know, we know that this can't work. They've got to shut the sites, but in order to shut the sites properly and make it effective um, uh, to, to slow down the transmission, what they've also got to do is make sure everybody gets paid. And that means whether you're on PAYE on the cards, whether you're self-employed or whether you're an agency worker, everyone's got to be paid. Because if they're not... People will carry on working just in order to pay the mortgage. Uh, and, and basically, uh, the big companies are prioritising money over, you know, public health. And I think what we need to be arguing for is that, uh, you know, the government steps in and pays everyone. Um, this, isn't, this isn't something sort of madness, you know, that could never be happening. In Hong Kong, the government paid every single citizen a thousand pound each. Uh, in order to keep them going. Um, the Spanish government literally yesterday announced they're going to introduce a universal basic income so that everyone in Spain gets paid a certain amount of money to uh, to, to tide them over, whether they work, you know, when they can't work. Um, the, uh, the Italian government has introduced a measure which basically says all mortgage payments, all rent and all, rent, all interest payments are suspended for three months while this goes on. Well, if no one had to pay their mortgage, no one had to pay their rent, no building worker or ever worried they were would put themselves at risk of, of, of killing some of their family members. Of course you wouldn't. You know, it's 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 the it's the money that needs to be sorted out um, in order to, uh, uh, you know, to stop the spread of the infection. Sorry, I'm ranting, but uh, <laughs> I, mean, <sick> <laughs> I, I know the feeling. I, I, I mean, to be honest, I mean, you're, you're not alone in that. I, I, I get a lot of very similar comments from, from people that are watching this and, and, and reading what we're doing over on Demolition News. One of the things that, that, that strikes me about this, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying to draw positives, you know, going forward out of, of what is a horrendous situation at the moment. But, you know, I, I do think one of the things, and you've just mentioned it there, this has very very publicly shown the the, the multi-layered and, and not necessarily entirely fair way that the uk construction and demolition industry is set up in that you know we've got these multi-layers with you know the tier one contractors lording at the top and and poor old self-employed bob the builder down the bottom who gets shafted from every direction you know it, it, it all things being equal you know if i could wave a magic wand you know, apart from curing the, the, the COVID-19, you know, it would be to rectify that situation and, and to put the industry back on a more even keel than it, it is at the moment, you know? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I was, I, I, I went in the building industry as soon as I left school. As I said, every every male member of my family did. Uh, I worked self-employed and agency for, you know, for over 20 years. Uh, you know, if I had a job on the cards, it was uh, one, I think I had one long job on the cards that lasted about, 18 months pretty much everything i also did was uh agency or uh self-employed uh limited company if there was a scheme uh, that they put you on I, I worked on them schemes not because i particularly wanted to because it's just the firms didn't offer it anymore in london uh you know people were forced to go and work in in that situation of course once you're on it you try and uh, reduce the amount of tax you pay everybody does um but but what it what it really noticeable to me is um you know, you said at the beginning that I was, I was, I was you know, blacklisted uh, by by the big firms. Oh, I, I am. I mean, this is this isn't making it up. There's, you know, we've all heard about the blacklist in the building industry. All the big major companies 
kept a kept a file on me. Uh, and if I complained about asbestos, if I complained about a, you know, I remember a young lad fell off the scaffolding once. I complained about that. Uh, I complained about overflowing toilets uh, on a job. Uh, uh, you know, um, basically that got recorded on this blacklist file. And then basically I got sacked uh, for, for, for moaning about it. And then every time I applied to get a job in the future, they used to check to see uh, if, uh, you know, whether I was on this, uh, this secret list that they uh, all had. Now, the point is, they're sending people back into the building industry where the building industry is now suddenly saying, oh, no, we can keep every, everyone safe. No, every, if anyone's got any concerns, come forward. If you're, you know, we've all worked in the game. If you come forward all the time moaning, saying, oh, I think this is unsafe, we shouldn't be doing this. Oh, look, you want me to go up three floors on a, on a ladder when we should have scaffolding? I'll tell you what the governor says. He says, do one. You know, if you don't want to go up the ladder, don't come in tomorrow, pick up your tools. Um, and so, you know, do I think uh, that the whole self-employment thing uh, should be sorted? Yeah, of course it should. But but that's a, that's a that really is a matter for another day. Because at the moment, people are dying and family members are dying. Uh, and there might be some people are fit and healthy. Uh, but if you're fit and healthy and you bring it back to your kids, I keep saying that. It, it's not about us. It's about bringing it back to your family members. Um, and, and people will be raging because they, they earn an extra couple of bob. Uh, but uh, a couple of members of your family have, have been killed. I, I think that's that's wrong. You know? Yeah, and it, I, I, and the wrongness of it, to my mind, seems to, to, to it goes deeper than that. I mean, one of the things I, I spotted on your blog today is the fact that um, we, we seem to have some English contractors who are working in Scotland that are using the fact that they're English contractors as some sort of international loophole to carry on working north of the border where yeah. where they've been told that they shouldn't. Well, you know, did, and that, that, that's just going above and beyond good sense, isn't it? Well, it just says it all, doesn't it? You know, there's... Uh, I mean, be, since we've been doing this, people are sending me stuff all the time, okay? Just sending it constantly through the post. There's one, uh, the one you talked about, uh, the Scottish government has banned uh, all non-essential construction work, uh, and yet you've got English firms turning up saying, oh, look, we're not, uh, we're not Scottish, we're not bound by the Scottish rules, we're, we're following the, the, the English rules. It's just it's ludicrous. It's like anything to make a few bob. Anything for the firms to make a few uh, pounds. Look, there are decent firms out there who have taken decent decisions. There's a biomass plant in uh, up in Hull where over 120 blokes have been furloughed and have all been. Uh, they're all on that government scheme. Uh, and and I talked to some of the blokes on there, and they said that there was a couple of uh, there was a couple of people there who couldn't quite apply uh, get the scheme. Uh, because I hadn't worked uh, there long enough, and and they negotiated it so that the the company gave them all like uh, a month's money, and you know without having doing any work. So there are decent people out there, sure, that are doing some decent stuff. But construction news ran a a uh, a, a story yesterday about uh, managers for various different construction companies who who have sent the, the the firm they're working for a list of things and look. We shouldn't. We should close the site down because it's dangerous. We can't comply with the things that we've been asked to do in the, this list. And they've been sacked for it. They've been sacked for suggesting that they could shut the uh, site down. You know, this is in construction news. It's not. This isn't in. You know, on, on some weird. Uh, you know, you know, out in the Twitter sphere with someone with three followers. This is construction news reporting tier one blue chip household name companies sacking uh, senior managers. Uh, or senior managers resigning because they're told to do things that they think is just completely uh, uh, unsafe. Um, but uh, anyway, you know, you know, where, where, where people do where where someone stands up and does something decent, then fair play. I think we should applaud them. But the the building industry at the moment, I mean, the, the upper layers of the building industry at the moment are doing anything to keep that open, and it's got nothing to do with. Public health has got everything to do with pound notes. Yeah, now I mean, one of the, one of the, the, the phrases that stood out on your blog because it's something I've I've alluded to in the past on my own um, is what you term a climate of fear, where you've got um, you know effectively the, the big companies that, that have got everybody else by the short and curlies effectively, and and that is it, it feels to me you know I, I I stand to be corrected but it feels to me like they are really tightening that grip at the moment um, to make sure that these sites stay open. Oh, completely. No, completely. Um, you know, there's um, 
Look, one of the biggest sites in the country at the moment is Inkley Point, a new nuclear power station. Now, if that was, there's, it's been built by EDF, which is a French multi multinational. Um, you know, you've got uh, Lango Rocks and, and all the big, uh, you know, some other big players down down there as well. Um, in France, the, the construction of the nuclear power station has been closed down. They've closed it down, the French government. So that's not that's not operating at all. But in in Somerset. You can carry on working. There's literally thousands of people working there. They're, they're staying in barracks on the site. You know, um, we've, you know, a lot, a lot of us uh, will have been and, and, and stayed in these kind of things. You know, what it is? Thousands of people crammed all together. You know, queuing up to go through the uh, uh, the, the, the check-ins. There's building sites all over the country where people have to lick their lick their fingers to stick their thumb on to do fingerprint. Uh, access to, to building sites. Literally, you're licking your finger and the next person coming along licking their finger at all. You couldn't have more an obvious sort of way of transmitting uh, this virus, yet that's still going on. They haven't they, they haven't stopped this. This is, you know, um, call me if it's true. You know, the blacklisting, you know, I was a, I was a, I was a safety rep um, and I was sacked as a safety rep for complaining about asbestos. Uh, I was a sacked as a safety rep about uh, complaining about uh, a fellow who fell off the scaffolding. Um, so if, if that can happen to me, then what happens is all the other workers around me, even if they are a bit worried about health and safety, they think, fuck me, if they've got sacked and he's meant to be, be given a bit of legal rights to, to moan about health and safety, then I'll keep my mouth shut, you know? And and that's why construction has got some of the worst fatality, well, not some of the worst, the worst fatality rates uh, for workplace deaths anywhere in, in the UK. Because there's, you know, because <laughs> you can only blame the people who run the sector, can't you? You know, if it was a company, you blame the manager. If it's an entire sector, you blame the big multinationals that run the sector. Uh, and you blame the government for allowing it to go on. Not just this government, but successive governments over many years, to be honest. Dave, you've been absolutely brilliant value, as I, I knew you would be. Um, I, I'm I'm following you on Twitter now. Uh, I know you've got this hashtag going, um, hashtag shut the sites. But where can where can people find you? I, I will put a link to your blog in the show notes for this. But is there anywhere anywhere else that people should look you up? Um, yeah, if um, if if um, I mean I because I'm blacklisted, we uh, we run a campaign i mean people have heard of stuff about blacklistings in the newspapers and in the construction press quite a lot you know all the big multinationals paid us out uh, for it uh, we uh we're in a um there's a on facebook there's a, a blacklist support group facebook page uh, on twitter i'm at dave blacklist uh, and there's a blog uh, from hazards magazine which is called hazards.org slash blacklist blog uh, and I can normally be found dancing around one of them free places when I'm not out uh, hounding, uh, hounding those uh, directors of multinational companies that in any decent civilised society would be in prison for what they're doing at the moment. Dave, I'm going to leave it, leave it at that point. Um, thanks ever so much for, for taking part today. Thanks for, for, for battling on against the, uh, the technology. Um, I'm glad you defeated it. Uh, keep up the good work, and I hope to speak to you again at some point when this is all blown over. Cheers. All the, best. All the best. Thanks for having me on. And for everyone listening, stay safe, people. Look after, look after your family. Look after your, your own health and other people's health. Cheers. Thank you. <clears throat> Can only echo that, really. Um, that That is absolutely... <laughs> That that is basically the point of this this live stream in the first place. You know, it is stay safe, stay away from sites if you can't make them safe. Uh, and I know, you know, I, I'm I'm putting myself up to be shot shot down. I don't mind that. You know, if I'd rather you vent at me than maybe at Dave or or somebody else. There will be exceptions. You know, I, I think I've I've used the term no binary solution in virtually every ver every edition of of this um, show. There isn't. There, there really isn't one size fits all solution to this. There, if I could wave a magic wand and close all the sites, there would be hundreds, hundreds that come back and say, "You don't need to close this because we, we have managed it." There's only one guy here. There's three guys here, but they're all working in different parts. There will be exceptions, but I, you know, I keep going back to to what Davis said there. This is not necessarily, in fact, it's almost hardly about the site. It's about what the site entails you know the guys and the, the ladies that are going to work on the site are going back to their families they're calling into the petrol station on their way to work or the way home from work 
they're going to the cafe for lunch or they're popping in somewhere to buy a sandwich or a loaf of bread for the way home or whatever it might be. All of that is contributing to the potential spread of what we know to be a deadly virus. Um, and, you know, I, I find it very, very hard to countenance that. As I say, there will be exceptions. And, you know, if, if you are one of those exceptions, please let us know. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm not saying that, you know, I know everything. Christ, my wife will tell you I know bugger all. But, you know, ultimately, we, we work in an industry where we we strive day in, day out, by the hour to minimize risk. This is a big risk. This is probably the biggest risk we have ever faced. It's bigger than dust. It's bigger than asbestos, or it's certainly more immediate than asbestos. And yet we're, we're still being very, very woolly about it, and, and that needs to stop. Um, I'm going to throw up one last time um, the fact that we are back um, for – well, we're back again tomorrow at 3 o'clock for the next round of um, the Demolition Daily live stream. Um, but we're also back tomorrow night at 7 o'clock over on Facebook, uh, the Demolition Social Club. If you do have time, get along. Um, my, my guess is the talk will be not dissimilar to what I've just had with Dave. Um, it will be talking about you know, COVID-19, you know, the, site's clo the site that you're on is closed or the site that you're on is open. But it could be anything, you know, whatever whatever springs to mind, the sort of stuff that you would have your, your usual chit-chat and your on-site gossip about, please come over and replicate that. Um, it's uh, facebook.com forward slash demolition news. You can find the details. It's literally press a button and you can join us. Um, until then, or until tomorrow at 3 o'clock when we're back again, thanks for watching. Um, as always, stay safe, look after each other, look after your families, your friends, your colleagues. Um, appeal to the, the better uh, nature of your of your seniors um, in the hope that they will see good sense and, and act accordingly in what is a global pandemic. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks again for watching.